We are going to look at acute syntactical sugar, JDK enhancement proposal number 305, pattern matching for instance of. This has been in preview or is going to be in preview for Java 14. Uh, we are going to look at the motivation, why would we actually need this, why it would be useful to, to have it around, uh, the description of the feature and I'll also make an analogy with the economy of scale. Uh, we are going to address the variable scoping and um, a very pragmatic example is going to be how to implement um, a more compact equals method. The source code for these examples is under the class pattern matching for instance of which resides in package com github kbnt java 14.pm. First let's look at how we do an object casting pre java 14. So in this example we have a mysterious object you see it's type java lang object and we assign a string to to it now down the road throughout the method there is no way for us to know that this is actually a, a string so we need to test so if mysterious object is instance of then we want to treat it as a as a mysterious object as a as a string and um, we are going to perform this cast that we see over here now the problem is that these are two lines of code, but somehow at this point, I would know that the object has been already a, is already a string. Can we do something something better than than this? Through the GP, we are addressing right now the Java language designers propose uh, to condense the test and the variable assignment into one single line of code. So this is the test. This is the assignment. In the new version, right, pattern matching, uh, for instance, of, we we'll do the test, and in the case that the test succeeded, we'd already be able to get this variable uh, assigned to a to a string, and we can use it down the road. That's pretty much the essence of this particular GEP. Now, I'm going to dive a little bit into why this is so important. We can think that this is a relatively small enhancement, right? It's not a fundamental, huge uh, add-on to the, to the language itself. However, ask yourself a simple question. How many times did you actually have to test and later on cast throughout your code? I've done it thousands of times probably uh, I've been in in that in that situation and uh, when we talk about the economy of scale um, I like to make this electrical analogy that I actually even even documented here so they say that if you replace your uh, top used light fixtures with uh, energy efficient ones you might say $45 per, per, per year and if you think about the number of households in the United States you would see that in one year, global in the United States, we can we can actually save five point billion dollars, right? Which is larger than the GDP of a small country like Montenegro. Now think about the fact that we are nine plus million Java developers, and if you look past, let's say, twenty years, twenty five years since people have been um, professionally writing Java code, think about how many lines of code would we would actually save by uh, leveraging these small enhancements enhancement with this newly introduced syntactical feature the only challenge that i see for for a developer or potential challenge is figuring out what is the scope of the newly introduced variable and let's look some at some some examples um, there is actually a pretty simple rule um, you can use the variable even only if you can figure, and in that condition, the compiler can also figure that your object can be successfully casted to the newly type, in this case, string. So here, because this test would pass, then it would make sense actually to leverage string object as a, as a string. If we look at the else branch and we uncomment this line, then we'll get a compilation error. Here, what I've done is took exactly the same, the same logic, but negated it. So now the string object becomes valid on the else branch. Okay. If I uncomment 
if I uncomment this line over here, we're going to get the compilation error. Here I have some Boolean assignments where, for example, uh, I'm testing if the, the string is 69 in length. So here the first part of the test actually validates if the object is a string. So then I can call string object dot length method on it. Now, because this is an AND, right, and is the smart uh, sort of AND with double ampersand, if this would be false, we wouldn't even get to call this over here, this part over here. So that's why the compiler says this is okay. However, if we try the same logic here, do the same test, but instead of AND, we're going to use an OR, this will produce a compilation error because we are not sure if the string object is actually a, a string. Arguably one of the best places where to use pattern matching for instance of is when overriding an um, equals method. Typically what we would do in the pre-java 14 uh, time uh, we would take the object, the parameter, test for uh, instance of and then do a cast and then later on compare the state as you can see here. Right. Now with the fact that we can introduce a new variable this will make the code after the instance of test much more elegant, much more compact. You can see here we do not have to do that casting anymore. And that's pretty much about the pattern matching for instance of. See you in the next video.